We've travelled today west of Sydney to the Nepean River to learn all about these, the boomerang, that wonderful carved wooden stick the Aborigines used to use to hunt small game. Well, today, non-Aborigines are using the throwing of these boomerangs as a sport. Over the past 40,000 years, Indigenous Australians have perfected a number of skills. The haunting sound of the didgeridoo or yadaki fills the air at their ceremonies. And they've perfected the art of making fire. Rubbing fire sticks together creates light and warmth and allows them to cook. Catching the fish and tucker to cook on these fires requires a sharp eye and a firm hand. Whether it be netting a school of small fish, landing a filled neck lizard, or spearing a larger fish, Aborigines across Australia have perfected the techniques that have allowed them to live off the land for so long. Bringing down larger animals has long been achieved by throwing a spear. But the weapon that has received most prominence has been the boomerang. Well, these ones here just made from plywoods, the proper ones, much bigger, three times bigger, much heavier. Okay, now it's mainly used for a flock of birds. Okay, now you get about five or six warriors standing in the line, a flock of birds flying across, that's when they throw it like a frisbee. So it'll turn, go straight up, hit the duck or geese or whatever after, and bring it back. The purpose to make it come back is so if you're hunting for something, you throw it like a kangaroo and it miss, it'll come back to you. Okay, save you going and pick it up again. That's how it was discovered. Okay, the men gave kids boomerang to practice with. The kids came back and they started whinging, how come, how come? And they were sick of going and getting the boomerang. So the old men just carved it out a bit gave it to the young kids, the young kids went away and they threw it and it came back to them. So they kept doing it and then the old fellas were thinking, well where's all the kids? So they went to see what they were doing and they could see they threw the phone the boomerang and it was coming back to them. What Indigenous Australians have so skillfully perfected, non-Indigenous Aussies have given a new spin. They've made a sport of it, with enthusiasts staging throwing competitions around the country. As we're about to learn at this major contest west of Sydney, there are a number of different events throwers can enter, all requiring a diversity of skills to score high points. Competition today is part of the Blue Mountains Championships run by the Boomerang Throwing Association of New South Wales. We have different events on. At present there's the Aussie Round, for which you get points for each throw for accuracy, distance and catching. This is a boomerang, Aboriginal made. This is a hunting stick. Boomerangs come back, hunting sticks don't. They have been used, we know these ones, the hunting sticks, have been around for tens of thousands of years and the oldest known boomerang that's been found by archaeologists in Australia is at least 12,000 years old. The hunting stick uh, is thrown sideways. It's thrown in this fashion, sideways, and it can go for over 100 metres. It can hit kangaroos or emus either before or after they've been speared to bring them down. A boomerang, on the other hand, is thrown in a vertical fashion and it's of course made to just come around and return as close as possible to the thrower. How was that? Almost got back to you. They, <laughs> there we go. I would have got about an 8 in a contest out of 10 for the accuracy, yes. A boomerang has a flat side and a curved side, rather like an aeroplane wing, and it works on the same principles. When you throw a boomerang, it doesn't really matter whether the elbow is forwards or backwards. This way gives you more control, this way gives you more lift. When you hold it, you can put one finger on the edge, a drive grip, or you can hold it like that, which is a spin grip, but the flat side must be away from you. I'm right-handed, so I'm using a right-handed boomerang. That means it'll go around anti-clockwise. A left-handed boomerang, will go around clockwise. I throw in relation to the wind. My piece of wool here tells me that the wind is coming from that direction, so I need to throw almost a right angle to the right. 
I also tilt the boomerang just slightly over to the right, only about 10, 15 degrees at the most. Bring it back just past my right ear, keeping it almost vertical, and then let it fly. The art is to try and catch it between the shoulder and the waist height, um, protecting the face with one hand, and then just pull it in like so. What we witness in this contest today is that boomerangs come in all sizes and shapes. This one has three sides and is made of thin plastic. Easier to catch, say, their throwers. Judges are on hand to record all throws. The closer the boomerang returns to the thrower, the more points they'll score. Officially, the boomerang has been categorised as a weapon, but all's friendly out on this field today. The appeal is that this ancient art relies on nothing but the thrower and a gentle wind. As we discover, these throwers feel very strongly about their favourite boomerangs. I like the way a boomerang looks when you throw it and when it flies. Even though I'm scoring and everything, I'd like to get good scores. The main thing is what it looks like when you throw it. And these have got a beautiful flight. I've tried all the modern ones, but I still like these, and I do all right with them, so. But I have some modern thin ones, but they're still two blades. Boomerangs with a novelty design are also in vogue. Whether it be celebrities like Michael Jordan or Elvis, cute coat hangers, or the Roadrunner. These are all more for show than throw. And if size matters, this one is a clear winner. This boomerang was one that I made to win the largest returning boomerang contest in 1981. And it was declared a world record as well in 1983. And how far did you manage to throw it? Well, it only does 25 metres, but it's the actual size of it that is what makes it the world's biggest returning boomerang. I won't throw it now because then I wouldn't have the biggest returning boomerang. If it breaks. That's correct. As for the champion thrower, what beats one boomerang? Two of them thrown together. Marvel is that they both come back to him. And to better that, what about catching it with his feet? Next time we travel Oz, the horizontal waterfalls, an adrenaline pumping ride through waves created by massive tides. The two teams take us to Corumba on the Gulf of Carpentaria. And we travel to the wildlife wilderness of Kangaroo Island. I do hope you've enjoyed exploring Australia on this episode of Travel Oz. I'm Greg Granger. Happy travels.